differential equations topic. In example 21, I went over these kind of additional notes to very briefly going to remind you if you haven't already seen it. A couple of notes. First of all, if we're duplicating a possible solution from our complementary function with our particular integral, we have to basically uh, add an x to multiply the particular integral by x to create a different solution so that we're not just creating uh, a duplicate possible solution. So it has to be a unique solution for the particular integral. Uh, and we're going to have a look at that in example 22. Uh, the second note uh, we're going to bypass basically says that sometimes your uh, particular integral might be a sum of the different terms, but we're not going to look at that in this course. And the third one is that we can look at particular solutions only once we've got the general solution to be found. So we're going to have a look at points one and three here. Okay, so we've got a diff second order differential equation. It's non-homogeneous because f of x is equal to 2e to the power x. And we've got some information about uh, particular conditions that are true, just like we did in example 21. So it's uh, non-homogeneous, so in order to start uh, the uh, solution, we're going to consider the homogeneous version of this equation. So we're going to consider d2y by dx squared uh, minus y equals 0. Uh, and in that case, the auxiliary equation will look like m squared minus 1 equals 0. So there's no uh, dy by dx, and remember the, the coefficient of the y here is just negative 1. So it becomes m squared minus 1 equals 0. Uh, a quick check. Again, you'll probably be able to uh, anticipate what's going to happen here. Uh, we've got the discriminant uh, tells us that b is 0. Um, there's no m term here. So 0 minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 that gives us a positive answer. So it's got real distinct roots. And that means that the form of the solution that we're going to use is y equals a e to the m1x plus b e to the m2x. Just to kind of bring these things into play before everything else descends upon us. So we can so this difference of two squares or we could just say m squared equals 1. Um, but to be uh, um, one of the solutions is we can just uh, different, uh, differentiate. Uh, uh, back to that, I suppose, the word I was looking for. So uh, m equals 1 or m equals negative 1. So these are our two values of m. doesn't matter which one is m1 and m2. So our, well, it's not a general solution this time because it's non-homogeneous. So our first uh, part of the solution is going to be the complementary function. Uh, and that's going to be, the, take the form y equals a e to the m1x plus b e to the m2 x, which means that we've got m1 I'm just called x, m1 is 1, and m2 is negative 1, so we end up with this as our complementary function. Okay, so no difference there to any of the other solutions that we've done. So, it's a non-homogeneous equation, so we're going to consider a particular integral. Um, um, because it's exponential, what have we got it to start with? There we go. We've got 2e to the x, therefore uh, we need uh, some constant times e to the x. We're going to mirror the, the, power of it, the power of the exponential, which is 1x. So we would normally say, because we've used constants a and b, I'm going to use constant c, and we would normally say, well, there's our particular integral, because e to the x is the same as the, the type of power. In f of x, the only problem here is, as we can see, that we haven't actually created a unique solution because c e to the x is of the same type as a e to the x, so just different constant terms. So we have created 
effectively the same solution. And so in order to manage that and to make a unique solution, we actually introduce a multiplier of x as well. So we've got a constant term c multiplied by x times e to the x, and that becomes our particular integral. Just from a point of view, any power of x would effectively be a, a valid solution. We don't need to, if there was, if we were doing more complex uh, solutions and we found that a e to the x had been taken up and so had cx e to the x, we could introduce an x squared e to the x and so on. So any power of x would be a valid solution. But in our situation, we only would ever come across this if we were adding an x term. So we can still go on and differentiate accordingly. We're going to differentiate that and it's going to give us, well, we've got the product rule. So it is a wee bit more involved in the product rule if we take that as a first term and that as a second term. The product rule says differentiate the first term and write down the second plus write down the first and differentiate the second. It's not too complex with this one, um, but it's uh, worth uh, just being very careful about, you might have a, um, a different way of writing out the product rule. But we've got a common factor there, as you can see. Uh, it's probably worth uh, writing as uh, well, shall we bother writing as a common factor c e to the x times uh, c plus 1 equals c e the x times 1 plus x. That would be it, wouldn't it? Common factor. Yep. Okay, so second derivative. Again, we've got a product rule uh, to do. There's our first and second terms. So without doing too much uh, written work, differentiate the first term. That's going to remain effectively unchanged, c e to the x, uh, and write down the second term plus uh, write down the first term and differentiate the second term, which goes to 1. So that becomes our second derivative. Again, there's a common factor we could uh, simplify because if we've got another c e to the x, it just becomes 2 plus x. Okay. So there's our terms that we're going to use. So we want to substitute. into 1. What is 1? We're way back up here. That's 1 here. So we've got d2y by dx squared minus y equals 2e to the x. d2y over dx squared minus y equals 2e to the x. So we actually only need uh, the second derivative here. So we've got c e to the x times 2 plus x minus y, which was our cx, uh, cx times e to the x is equal to 2 e to the x. Okay, so again, we're just trying to kind of work out, uh, something, you're comparing the values here. Um, and what we can see here is that uh, if I multiply that out, I've got 2c e to the x plus cx e to the x minus cx e to the x equals 2 e to the x. And these two terms cancel out, and we're left with 2c e to the x equals 2 e to the x. In other words, comparing the coefficients, 2c has to be equal to 2, and so c is 1. In other words, a particular integral, which started off as cx e to the x, is now just going to be x e to the x. Which means that we can come up with our general solution. And the general solution, remember, is the complementary function plus the particular integral. So we've got y equals, um, what did we start with? We had a e to the x plus b e to the negative x. That's our complementary function. 
plus our particular integral, x d to the x. And there is our general solution. That's what we're posing for. Good, so that would be the end of the solution if and only if uh, we didn't have any more information, but we do. So we've got uh, two pairs of information. If we go scoot back up to the top, uh, we're told that y is 5. Oops. Y is 5 when x equals 0. And we're told that dy by dx is 0 when x equals 0. And remember that we, uh, we use the x value in both of the, the pairs of information. So the first thing I'm going to do is the, the y and x. x is 0 and y is 5. So, for the particular solution, x equals 0 and y equals 5, which means substituting in, we've got 5 is equal to a times e to the 0 plus b times e to the 0 plus or 0 times whatever, that's going to be 0. There's 1 and 1, so we've got a, a solution that remains 5 equals a plus b, and we can uh, keep that, or we can remember that we'll, well, maybe we have to do something like a equals um, 5 minus b, or we'll, we'll use a version of that in a moment. So we don't have a solution for a or b, but we've got some of them. We're going to introduce our second idea that when x is 0, y by dx is uh, also 0. Okay, So we need to work out uh, the derivative of this. It's exponential. It's not too bad. We've just got a product rule on the, the last uh, term. So uh, what can we say? dy by dx is equal to uh, a e to the x differentiates to a e to the x. And watch the second one here. Uh, that's going to become uh, b e to the negative x multiplied by negative 1. So it becomes minus b uh, e to the negative x. And our product rule on the, the last part becomes plus derivative of x is 1 times e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So there's my product rule uh, going on there. Uh, there's not much. I, I could simplify it, but uh, we'll leave it as it is just now. But what we want to do is to, we don't have a value of a or b to substitute in, but we do have um, a, an expression of one in terms of the other. So let's substitute uh, that in. As we go along, we've got 0. So in other words, uh, we can say that 0, what have we got? dy by dx is 0. Uh, a we're going to call 5 minus b times e to the 0 minus b times e to the 0 plus e to the 0 plus, and so that's going to just be a 0 term because x times e to the x is going to be 0. So we can simplify that. Oh, that's going to uh, that's going to go to one. So we've got zero is equal to. Got that's one. We've got five minus b minus b plus one. What does that give us? Uh, six minus two b. So two b equals six. So therefore b equals three. If b equals three, a is equal to 5 minus b, so a is going to be 2. And we've got our two values of a and b. So sometimes you have to uh, create an expression of one variable in terms of the other and do a bit of substitution. There's nothing overly complex, but there's just a lot of wee stuff going on as far as even differentiating that function and getting the, the product rule uh, in there. So there's lots of wee bits of maths to try and do. So. Particular solution, particular solution. We've got everything to put together. We've got y equals, it was a, so it's 2 e to the x plus b e to the negative x plus our particular integral was x e to the x. And there is our 
particular solution. Okay, there's a lot of uh, work through that. Uh, it's really worth spending some time uh, managing to do all these little bits uh, and to be confident in it because it's um, it's a good question to try and work through and you'll get a lot of satisfaction from getting the answer at the end. Okay, go for it.